A lot of people ask me about getting water in their basement. Why, why am I getting water in my basement and what could I do about it? So I got a couple examples, but if you look behind me, this house, it has the land going away from the house and it has rain gutters and the rain gutters go away. A lot of people have the land going towards their house. It rains heavy, it gets in their basement and floods it. So we're gonna look at a couple videos. One of them shows how the land goes towards the house and it gets flooded. The pumps didn't work, it got flooded. They had to pump it out and we had to fix the pump. The second one is the same thing. Water went towards the house. It kept getting in the basement. They had to dig the whole thing out, replaster it, and retar it. And then after that, I'm going to talk about what you could do on the inside of a house to keep water from coming in. Here we go. Today I'm working with Honest Jardy, but I'm going to show you why most houses get flooded because they always have the ground pointed towards the house. So this house basement got flooded and the fire company came and pushed it all out and then we just came in and put a couple pumps in so we we're going to show you how we did it. Here we go, you see this time and time again. Water comes down the rain gutter, goes here, and then down the cellar. I want you to see what most of the problem with the houses where I live are. It's the water, the ground is pitched down towards the house. So when it rains just like a roof, where does it go? It goes down the cellar. So they had a couple problems here and we're gonna fix them with Honest Jardy the plumber. <laughs> so we're down the cellar and the fire company came and pumped it all out. You can still see the standing water here. And what they did, since they had a water problem, is they got this like it's a vinyl going around the sides. They cut all around the sides here the water goes into the drain that's underneath there, and then it goes into the sump pump. Let's take a picture of that pump. This is what, a Liberty pump? Liberty. So these are the pipes right here that goes underneath the concrete where it comes down. And he's gonna measure now to put that pipe in. This is the other sump pump. You see the water coming out from underneath the foundation? This is a check valve. You see, you can't see through it, but then it opens up and it closes, so the water only goes one way with this. Right now I'm just cleaning the water. We just did a test measurement on the, for the pipe, and I'm cleaning the water out, so, and I'll prime it. Here's our measurement. And these are pressure couplings. They're deeper than a, a regular Schedule 40 coupling because the pump puts pressure on it. They're mostly used in swimming pools and pump applications. Actually, you're supposed to do the pipe first when you, you glue it. I don't know why, but... And then the hub. Okay. okay. Now, where's our little drill? You need to put a... You need a relief hole in the, the pipe. I don't like putting them up high because they squirt all over. So I've been putting them down low lately and they work just an eighth inch hole. So the water, the water drains, the water drains back out of this section. That's it. So we plugged it in. And now let's uh, get rid of all the stuff. And if anything came into that line again, it's got the check valve, so it won't come back. You can see the holes there. Yep. You can you see, see the, the holes in the in the drum. That allows the water in from underneath. Yes. Yeah. So it's working. When it fills up a little more, the pump will go on again. And we're going to look at this system again here. Here's how it works. You just nail this vinyl or plastic to the wall. The water comes down the wall, goes into the drain underneath because they cut this all up and then it goes back into the drum. Now I'm going to explain what these companies do when they try to stop water from coming into your cellar. This is basically what you just seen. Is they have a 
a block wall or a concrete wall or a stone wall like this and usually on the bottom they have about four inches of concrete well all they do with it is they come with a saw and they saw out as much as they need maybe four inches six inches eight inches whatever they want like this and they move it back like this then they go get a pipe that has holes in it this is a small one and it's just an example but they put it in and then they get regular gravel that's all this is is pea gravel or 1b they call it and they put that up against the pipe like this and they'll get a piece of fiberglass or something to come down like that and they'll attach it to the wall so any of the water will come down underneath and it'll go into the gravel into the pipe and then go into your bucket which pumps it out then they'll mix in cement just like this and they'll fill that hole in and you don't have to go four feet inches or anything just a couple inches two and a half inches maybe just to cover it and then if you ever had to hammer it out for some reason you could do it you won't have to be into the size and everything again so that's the basics of it now we're going to go look at a cellar where they dug the outside out now this house was built 1970 you could tell just by the style of it and what happens they get water in the cellar so they dug out around the foundation with that machine they get over here to the garage there was no foundation under the garage so uh, the whole problem with the building though is as you can see around the neighborhood here it's a mountain and all this water comes right towards that house so what they got to do is they dug it out back in 1970 they didn't put any drain tile in anymore they inspect it to make sure you put the drain tile in and then what happens is after the drain tile goes in because we live in mountains in Pennsylvania the drain tile will go out right there right over the bank and there won't be no more water laying against the house our job today is just to fix up this corner and patch it and get ready for uh, get ready to uh, replaster it and water waterproof it. Clean this up a bit. Now you're getting all the dirt off of it. Yeah, well, these scrapes up to here. Yeah. The shovel. Get all the dirt off of it. Yeah. And over here, that's where we all patched right. it all up. And then just gonna tar over it. Okay. Now, get some of these foundations. Just gotta wet it and all them cracks and everything. Just go over it. It's gonna get tarred anyway. And then just sponge it so it's easy to uh, paint over the top. That's all. That's all you do. Now there's the building. That's the part I fixed over there. Then they put the foundation coating on. And next thing you're gonna put is the gravel in and they're gonna put their uh, drain pipe and I'm going to explain that So I want to show you where we're at here They put on some a uh, layer of uh, Gravel down they put the drain tile on top of that below the footer and You can see over here they're filling the whole thing with gravel so it don't leak no more anything all the water goes right through the gravel down through the footer down through the pipes and eventually over the bank. You can see on this side of the building they dug a trench all around the house and uh, you can see the gravel down there and then that trench is going to go right out down over the bank just like that. So we looked at that that's extreme where they actually dig the outside of the foundation out and then they pl uh, replaster it and they recoat it. Now sometimes they'll even put some sort of fabric over the top of it whether a heavy plastic or rubber or fiberglass to keep more of the water out now if you're doing another foundation like an old stone foundation same thing you dig it out you fill everything in 
you foundation coat it and you're done I did a video called concrete porch with deck pans and in that video I, I show you I did the block first then I plaster it then you gotta wait four five six days or whatever and then you you tar it with the foundation coating and let's look at that video now so this is down below ground level remember when I I did that to the footer so all the water would come down and, and go off the footer. Kind of going around patching everything at the end of the day. I'll just put a coat of plaster on the whole thing. Hides all my sins. It's going to be underground anyway. You can put a double coat on if you want. And then right down here on the bottom, we put our little coat. Just like that. And any water that comes down will go down over the cold and over the top of the footer. Now I plastered this and uh, I'm just going to go over the bad spot so that when I go over it with the foundation coating, everything will be smooth and everything will work right. Now, what we're doing. We are tarring this down below the, the dirt line. We go all the way down here, if you could see down there. Right over that cove I put in, right down over the footer. And then that way, any water that comes down here is going to go right down here, hit that cove, and go over the top of the footer. So that's basically the way you do it, whether you do it on a brand new construction, you rip it out, wash it all out, and plaster it all up like I do on my foundation videos but that's mostly the way it was done traditionally ever since I started doing masonry now let's look at a house where the rain gutters come down and the water goes out now we're looking up here the rain gutter comes over the rain gutter comes down it goes into a, a PVC pipe it goes away from the house and it comes out right there and goes down the alley. That's the way a rain gutter should be to keep water away from your basement. So my experience working on foundations all my life and I've seen it where you could actually swim in some of these basements. The biggest thing you got to do is make sure your land is sloped away from your house and make sure you've got rain gutters on and the rain gutters are out way that go away from the house. Now, when it rains out, and it's a heavy rain, it gets into the land and it swells it up. And then when your land gets dry, it shrinks. And you're getting hydraulic pressure there. That's actually pushing against your foundation. In our area, we have a lot of frost. And the frost could go up to six feet deep, and that pushes against it. So you want your land around your house as dry as you can get it. Uh, the winter hits, everything changes. Uh, you got to watch where it freeze, freezes up and where it doesn't freeze up. And it's like swimming pools. When uh, anybody, I've worked on swimming pools in the past, and swimming pools, they always, once they put like a concrete swimming pool in, they'll leave a hole on the bottom so that if water gets into the ground, it'll get up in a swimming pool. If they don't do that, that swimming pool will float like a battleship. Some inspectors will say, unless you see daylight, you're, you don't put drain tile in. I don't agree with, with that. <clears throat> uh, sometimes I've seen houses with drain tiles or swimming pool and they'd have to put the pump on the outside of the house down deep to get rid of the water. So you got to think this stuff out. You got to look around for the problems and then you got to correct it. So that's it for the most part. It's all common sense. You got to look at where the water is going. When it's raining, go outside, take a look at where the water is going and correct it. That's the best I could tell you. I hope these videos help. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. I'll see you next video.